Hello, this is Jermaine from Beat Spider. This next project, I'm going to show you how to incorporate a large bead into the center of your beaded work. If you've not done beaded kumihimo before, just follow the link that I've provided for you and you'll see a full demonstration. Now, the first thing we have to consider is will our cord fit through the hole of the bead? Because obviously you need the bead hole large enough that you can get all of your threads through it. So what we're going to do, obviously it's an eight strand braid, so I need to ensure that eight strands will go through this bead. I do cheat a little bit. What I've done is I've actually bent these cords around so that I have four strands. Then I'm going to use my nifty split needle and I'm going to put the threads through there because I know if I thread that on and it threads through the bead, it'll be eight strands. So it doesn't matter if it's a tight fit. If I could get it through, look, goes through easily. You can see I've now got my eight strands through and I've got plenty of room. So I know now that this bead should, with luck, fit on my eight braided strands. Now I'm making a necklace here and what I've done is I'm using the uh, polyester thread the high tenacity polyester thread and I've just done a, a simple eight strand braid and I've made myself about four or five inches worth because this will go around my neck. So we have to do a little bit of math now but it's not too difficult. So the first thing we have to think about is the length of our finished piece and in this case it's a necklace so the finish length is going to be about 18 inches. Now, okay, so here's 18 inches on the tape measure. Now, I, as I've said to you, I'm putting four inches of this braid either side of my neck because the braid will be very comfortable to wear and it also means that I can be more economical with the beads because beads, you know, kumihimo can be very bead hungry. So four inches either side of my neck from my 18 inch finished takes me down to 10 inches in the middle. Now I have to work out if here's my 10 inches in the middle the size of my focal bead in the center is very nicely an inch. So that means I'm going to have nine inches oops, to contend with because which will be four and a half inches either side and if you're a centimeter person just quickly four and a half is about 12 centimeters each side. So I need to fill the beads either side of this focal um, of my necklace I need to th make four and a half inches worth of beads. Now how do you know how many beads to use? I did cover this in my first video but I'll just go through it briefly again. What you do is thread up your beads and this is this is a rough guide but it works pretty well um, and you measure how many beads are here in one inch. And if you look at this, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as a rule of thumb, I would say for every inch of my necklace on each strand, I'm going to need about six to seven beads. So this is four and a half inches. So six, four is 24 plus three is 27 beads. So if you put 27 to 30 beads on each of your strings that should be enough hopefully to get me to my four and a half inches so I'm going to load these up now with 27 beads each and let's see if the maths worked so I've been making my beaded braid 
as you can see it's coming along quite nicely and I'm almost at my finished length uh, but I just thought I'd just recap with you on where I've put the beads so if you see my layout here you can see that I have beads vertically you know, or diagonally opposite each other so in this uh, right side here I've got beads on the, the left here and then if I turn it around then on this right side here I've got the beads diagonally opposite there so I'm just going to continue along I've only got one or two more beads to attach and then I'm finished so that one just pops under there like that and that one under there like that rotate around and these larger beads can tend to pop out a bit so it's good to hold them in place with your finger so that they behave themselves and just pop you under there they have a they have a habit of wanting to run away with themselves and then I can lock them in with the four threads without beads There we go, three, four, and then they're locked in, and then I can continue on. So I've only got one or two, and uh, then I'll show you how to um, put on the, uh, the bead in the middle. So I've measured that, and it's just, just shy of four and a half, so I'm happy with that. I mean, I could add in another one or two beads if I wanted to, but... That'll do me fine because by the time I add the clasp, anyway, it's going to give me that little bit extra I need. So I'm just going to continue making a braid here. Uh, it'll be just a plain braid with no beads. And I'll need to do that for uh, about an inch. That will cover the length of the hole in my bead. If you recall... I've got the large hole and the length from hole to hole is about an inch so I want my braid to come just short of that hole at the other side so that's what I'm going to continue to do now. I've finished doing my braid and I've done about the inch I need and I can just pull it down a bit and just check the size and that looks pretty good to me. What I can also do is give it a little stretch because you know your cord will stretch over time so if you pre-stretch it then it's going to be a nice snug fit on your bead. So that's that's pretty good. Now if it's too long I can always unravel a bit. Now what we're going to do is I want to um, secure the braid at this point because I need to take the threads off. So there's two ways you can do that you can get yourself a piece of cord and you can tie a knot around there or if you have a little alligator clip you can just come in very close and just clip it where I want that cord not to move so there it is there now that that's holding everything in place I can take my threads off my disc and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take off any leftover beads and I'm going to take off and unravel all the bobbins. So now I've got all my threads here and I'm going to have to put them through my bead. So now see here I've got one that's a little fray. What I'm going to do with that is just give that a little dip in the old super glue um, to, to just firm it up for me. Now I can just put on a... Um, a split needle but there this will just bring it together for me and firm it up because I do need to thread more beads on it again in a minute anyway the others are all pretty fine so I'll just let that one dry okay and in the meantime while that's drying 
I can probably just pop these ones onto my split needle and pop them in there and maybe do three or four at a time and then I'll just pop these ones through my bead and then take off my split needle and then I'll do the others as well. There we go, so that's those four. And then I've got my super glue one as well. One, two, three, four, which is probably pretty dry by now. And then I'll just pop my split needle on there as well. And just pop them in. I'm trying not to touch the super glue because it's a little bit sticky still. Okay. That one through there. That one through there. Good. And then I'm just going to pop these through and hopefully these will also go through double. Which they may not. Here it comes. I've got them through. Lovely. So now I've got all my threads through. And now I can just pull this down. <clears throat> just get all my threads neat and tidy. Right, now I'm up to my alligator clip. Now the thing is, if you made this too long, you can just unravel it. But I'm just going to take off the clip and pop him on and he's in, oh look at that, lovely. Nice firm fit, perfect. That's gonna look lovely. All right, so now back on to the disc and it doesn't matter where the threads go, you can just put them on. And then I'm just going to lay them out as we did before. There we go. So that's all on the board nicely now and I'm just going to actually those two are crossed I'll just swap those two over and then I'm just going to continue to braid without beads just so that I get past this bead and just a little bit up above so that when I put the bead in underneath there it's not going to get obstructed by the by the the big large bead so I'm just going to do some normal braiding, probably don't need to do a lot, just enough to raise myself up from the bead. Okay, I think that will do it. Okay, so I'll just leave this in position. I'm going to now thread on 27 beads on each of my threads and then continue with my bead braiding. Now I've set up all my beads and my threads back into their little spools so I'm all neat and tidy and again I've put the beads in diagonally opposite each other just like I did before. So I'm going to begin my weaving now and I'll just begin to thread in um, the beads. So one, two, three, four, and now I'm up to my first bead, and hopefully that should just pop under there without a problem. Yep, and not be hindered by the bead. So just pop that one under there. There we go, and now I'm away. I can continue on and continue beading until I get to the other end of my necklace and then I can just finish it off uh, with of course my just like I have here with another you know four or so inches of the thread.